What is going on, everybody? It's your boy DJ yet again with more Japanese culture stuff. So let's dive right in. Really excited about Wagaki bands. I seem to remember I tried to upload a video of this before and it got decimated by the copyright thing. So I'm, I'm hoping that this one makes it through. So this is one that I... I don't remember anything about it, so my love for baby metal has brought me here, and your comments have brought me here, so we're not going to waste time. We're grabbing the headphones, jumping in. Please, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell. No, you guys know, uh, YouTubers, we're asking you to do this stuff. You guys know why. It helps the algorithm. Things are good. Wagaki band right here. You guys right here. Headphones right there. It's so much fun hanging out with you guys. Magic Finger does the work. Let's watch it go. I gotta love a good whammy bar thing. Look up Pantera Live. It's what I love about that stuff. Already a fan. I see why you guys wanted me to watch this, didn't you? Japanese taiko and traditional drum sounds with the shred guitar player. Uh, it's like you guys know me so well. Psycho assisted double kick? Coolest part so far. Okay, whoever recommended this, you are my new best friend. Please email me. I want to start a penmanship. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I did the, the yes, yes, yes. Oh, dude. Okay, let's take a let's take a break and talk about all this stuff. If anybody doesn't know about the whammy bar thing, the idea of a whammy bar is that the bridge, which is down here where the strings get fixed to the guitar, the bridge is not fixed. It's it's hung with two screws here and a spring system, so the whole back end of it is not connected to the guitar. This allows the guitar player to take a, a take a light bar, we call it a whammy bar, and bend 
the bridge, either bend it all the way down, causing the notes to dive low, or to pull it up, causing the notes to get high. A lot of the guitar players that do the shred style stuff, a lot of it is so in intrinsic of that to, to get a shake or a vibrato is sometimes difficult in the moment, so they'll grab the bar and use the bar to shake that and mimic it. Dimebag Daryl, who you guys can probably see up here in the blue, he's my hero. He used to do these crazy, like, long high pitch just break your eardrum sounds which is what made me fall in love with that sound i love all of this and then the traditional japanese instrument which name is escaping me but what a cool thing to add oh my god tapping we've seen that before we've seen that on other videos right Next slides, dragging the pick down the string. Oh. Oh. Oh no. She don't ever. Officially the coolest thing on the channel yet. We're getting good old Bartholomew to come in here and get a closer look. Check this out, buddy. This is dope. Okay, okay, I'm I'm getting put on a trance. So before I forget, uh, what happened was traditional Japanese vocals of this style became quite nasally, so that they can control a lot of vibration or what we call vibrato. But they wanted the vocal notes to do this nasally to combat the pluckiness or the the thinness of the traditional harp sounds and the. Again, the traditional instrument names are, are escaping me, but the guitar style one and the hand-based lap one that's like a harp, these ones with a flute or a wind instrument, the wind instrument's purpose was these long grandiose notes that would flow up and down. And then the traditional parts of the tighter strings, because they were so tightly wound, they would serve a better purpose to be narrow while the pitches of the, the large wind instrument. So the vocalist would come in and tie it together with a cool nasal placement that would make it all go like this. It, Kind of a uh, simplest explanation, but it's years ago on Nintendo 64, there was a video game called Legend of the Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. And it was this kind of cartoony kind of game that was an RPG, and the music is extremely similar to that. Brilliant. It just made me think of it for some reason. It's important to note real quick that the taiko drummer or the traditional drummer is hitting the offbeats right now, which is insane. The drum will go lin dum boom gong dun dum boom gong. You'll hear the taiko guy who do the offbeats. Please listen for it because it's incredible. <laughs>
Let's talk. You guys know how much I love traditional Japanese things. <laughs> that is just ridiculously cool. Even Bartholomew liked it, didn't you, bro? Didn't you, bro? <laughs> I love it. I love all the aspects of that and the cool, like, I, like I said, the traditional nasal sound of the voice, and then it, it would envelop longer. The the wind instrument thing is really cool to talk about because wind instruments are dependent for tuning wise on an embouchure, which is a fancy way of saying like your mouth, right? So everybody's mouth is different, and you're forced to learn to wrap the mouth around playing the notes to be in pitch with everybody else that's involved. But to be able to get this guy in pitch and in range with the rest of the instrumentations and vocalists of a kind of a rock band in that scenario is fantastic. I mean, dude's doing backflips around everywhere. So yeah, whoever recommended this one, pat yourself on the back. That's a new favorite. That is a new absolute favorite. Guys, let me know what you thought. I want to have this conversation below. This is, this is wicked. Absolutely wicked. Thank you so much for recommending that one. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, do the whole thing, send an email, let's have a conversation. You guys know what's up. As always, sending my love to you guys all. Hope you're having a great time. Watch it go.